It's the Black Real Estate Dialogue. Tune in. Tune in. Tune in. Tune in. Tell us about that first that first deal. Um, just kind of what that looked like. And also like what it what it felt like from both of your perspectives just to, to hit that first milestone and get that first home run, if you will. Okay. Hey, well, uh, oh, you can go. The, <laughs> <laughs> um, the, the, the first deal that uh, we actually got from a wholesaler. Um, it, that wholesaler had been sending me deals for, I would say, well over a year. Uh, sometimes uh, I would contact back and forth with, 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 with that wholesaler and letting her know that, oh, I'm interested in this property. Can you tell me more? Because it was my way of learning the industry, uh, even if I didn't have the means to actually execute the deal. It, I would write down on a notepad and everything about, okay, th- this property is cost this much. After closing, I'm going to have to put up this much. This is how much the renovation cost will be. So I would get acclimated to the uh, real estate math and like, okay, this deal is a good deal. This deal is not a good deal. So this deal came across uh, my email uh, one afternoon and I called my wife immediately. We have a deal we should buy. Uh, I'm going to put an offer and she's like, are you sure? Are you sure? Are you sure? And we're kind of on a fence. <laughs> about, can, 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 do we really pull a trigger for this? And I think we went to go take a look at the property. Uh, we, we did our due diligence, everything added up. Uh, this very first deal, I remember like the back of my hand, even though it, it was years ago with many properties after it, because it's still our first love property. Uh, I pretty much, it was pretty much our proving ground. I did a lot of the work. I did the cabinets in that property. Wow. I did some painting in that property. Everything that they tell you not to do, I did uh, as, as an investor. Actually put it in the work and learning the actual business of real estate inside and out. Uh, my wife was in the property as well. We were in the property two or three uh, in, in the morning sometimes, uh, putting up with uh, all different types of neighborhood disturbances because it's not in the best neighborhood. Uh, it was really a proven ground of how we learned the actual business of real estate with that property uh, right there. And um, to this day, we still own that, prop- own that property as a, um, a rental property. Uh, we're landlords. We have a really good tenant who's been in that property since day one. And um, property now has over $100,000 in equity. Uh, it, most of us can test to the red hot real estate market right now. But it's always our first love. And <laughs> we barely see it. Uh, because there are hardly any property problems at the property, but every time we uh, get a call or a text from uh, the uh, uh, the uh, tenant, it, it, it's always something like, "Oh, I remember this property." It gives a lot of problems, but it, it's our first child. <laughs> we have talk like going back to what he said about problems. I mean, being that it was our first property, um, it was quite a few things that you know we had on our checklist and our to do list, but it was a lot of things that we wouldn't do now that we did in that property. Um, for instance, him going back on, you know, doing the cabinets and myself, um, I'm the project manager of the team. So hiring different individual contractors instead of an entire team having a GC, um, that was kind of hard, I would say in the beginning because you're managing individual people instead of having a GC do it. So I would think from my point of view, um, the hiring part was a little strange and also, you know, different things happening in the neighborhood. But other than that, it, it was a learning, you know, experience. Once we got to our second deal, our third deal, our fourth deal, it was just a piece of cake, sort of say. Definitely, definitely. There's a couple of things that I don't, I want to make sure we don't skip over from that, from that story. One thing you mentioned is that you two were there like painting, putting cabinets, doing a lot of the work. And there, there's, there's like, let's say two schools of thought, right? One side says, all right, we outsource everything. We don't touch a paintbrush. We don't touch a broom. And others is like, you know, get your hands dirty in the beginning. Learn the ins and outs of everything. Um, understand the cost. Understand all these things. That way in the future, you know if you're getting a good num- a good bid on something. You know, um, you know what it's supposed to look like. You know how long it's supposed to take. Um, and so yep. I, I just really want people to understand that you know you you don't have to outsource everything in the beginning some people just choose never to do it and it's just really up to what you're comfortable with but there's a lot of value in in really especially if you're local and really understanding and knowing um how to do these things and, and trying some of these things so i would just love for, for, for you to, to talk a little bit more about why that was uh, why you chose to do that at that time and 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 what you learned from it that has helped you since then I think hey, overall, uh, 
Oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you can go if you want, Artie. Okay. Uh, I was thinking that uh, that proving ground, that training ground for that particular property, um, it was a little bit of being stubborn on one end, not listening to my, our mentors about doing everything. And a little bit of it is I need to learn this business. I, I know a little bit about home improvement, but whatever I can do to either cut cost or, or just learn how to do this, it's better for the business. We can work inside the business, but properties 10 through 15 or 20, 30, we'll be able to work outside of the business and it'll be multiple projects going on at once. But for this uh, beginning, we need to learn. Uh, we need to get hands-on with the project. I need to actually get the cost of things, not only the, the, the labor cost, the actual material cost. And just learning the ins and outs. I call them big five uh, when, when I'm going in for rental properties, uh, HVAC, plumbing, electrical, um, foundation and roofing i need to learn the big five because i'm going to have this property for years and years and years and i need to know how these things interact within the home so uh that was my number one thing half being stubborn and half wanting to learn the inside of the business before i just pay a bunch of people and not knowing the actual cost you can go ahead uh love um i was just gonna say something similar you know that of that nature um for me it was more I feel like, you know, paying it to being that it was our first property, paying attention to our budget, making sure we don't go over. And like we said, sometimes watching, staying up late, watching YouTube to see how we sand down the cabinets and then gloss them and then paint them. And then, you know, and only spending a hundred dollars to do so or $200 versus $2,500. And we still have those same cabinets to this day. They're still nice. They're still beautiful. And it was just a great decision at that time. Um, just trying to do everything that we know we could painting, um, staging. I love to stage. Um, I love buying little trinkets from like um, at home, Marshall Home Goods and kind of setting up the property. So when people walk in, you know, they know what to expect and they know how to visualize themselves living there. So instead of paying a stager $2,500, I was like, let me just spend $150 and kind of fix it up how I want to. Um, in regards to, you know, the landscaping thing, I believe we started doing, um, planting our own flowers. Like we can save costs on this. Instead of spending, you know, $200 on flowers, we can just do it ourselves, um, cutting the grass and just different things. People in the neighborhood too also started to help out. I mean, we had a neighbor, um, Mr. Jesse, he will come and he's like, hey, I'll cut your grass for $35 and <laughs> running back. And it was just <laughs> different things. Yeah. Like just, getting to know everybody in the neighborhood and them willing to help. Cause you know, when they met us, they were like, is this y'all's first home? And we would love to help. Um, if y'all need anything, let us know. And that was the best thing about that neighborhood. I felt like it was the welcoming of, you know, of the, of the neighbors, of everybody helping. A neighbor was like, oh, I can give you my camera or, you know, we can watch out for your property while you're out of town. And just different things that we didn't really have to worry about. And it was just such a blessing. Um, in regards to the plumbing and the different things, we knew somebody who who did that part and then he hired a friend and they helped us out on, on the budget with that. And it was just different things that we were so blessed and, you know, um, with that first property. So I would say when you're starting your first property and you're not too sure, like, I don't know how this is going to work. I don't know the cost of anything. Try to see how much things will cost if you do it yourself, um, painting and priming and different things. And you would save a lot of money. That's what we did, basically doing our research. Definitely, definitely. So it sounds like you two had a pretty good foundation uh, for the first property. So um, what was next? You know, I'm sure, you know, get, get your feet wet, get, get a tendon in there and all that. Um, what was the thought about, all right, we hit this first milestone. Like, how do we grow? How do we grow from here? What was that like? Uh, I, yeah, I don't re remember properties like, two through maybe like 10 one do stick everything after that began to really speed into really quick mm -hmm. uh things fixing flipping buying and holding but i do recall we did purchase a property uh fox, Fire? Fox Fire? 
Oh yeah, Fox Farm. Yeah, that, that was was that what it was. Oh, everything sorry, we became, name our properties. Oh, gotcha, yeah, gotcha, yeah, gotcha. Yeah, we, we have a name for them. Uh, we everything became a system at that point in time. So we knew the ins and outs. We knew how much things would cost, and I think it became more of a system because I'm a systems person. I like to do do our due diligence, make sure we uh, make the money at the buy, make sure everything is fixed up, and we can get them. We we plan to fix and flip that property, and that's what we did. Um, and I knew that we were going to a season where her birthday was coming up and she likes to go around the world for her birthday. And I'm like, we can't be bogged down with this property. So we have to make sure the systems are in place when you're in Dubai, we're not able, we're not going to be bothered with this project. So we went on with that project and, um, it worked with the system and we've been using that system ever since, uh, thanks to her and her project management skills with GCs and how we, uh, hire other subcontractors. Hi everyone, Sam here from Black Real Estate Dialogue. Make sure to hit that notification bell and that subscribe button and to visit us at blackrealestatedialogue.com.